Joel Schumacher has sadly passed away earlier this year. A filmmaker who did so much that gets held in high regard, yet the dorks who consider themselves true fans of film, will always condemn him for two movies, and even then, mostly one. Batman and Robin. Look, I'm not here to say Batman and Robin is secretly a good movie, though I would say it's entertaining. I'm here asking all the people who strongly hate the movie to let it go? Maybe even reassess their feelings? Not necessarily change their stance, but at least think about why they hate anything, specifically this movie, so much. Granted, Batman and Robin has largely left the focus of geek hate in recent years, which I say is about time given how old the movie is, but then when Schumacher passed away, we had takes like these. Wow, I mean, if you hated this, fine, but to trash a filmmaker, a person for doing a movie you didn't like, even on their death, that's just all kinds of shitty. Your emotions make you weak, that's why this day is mine. <laughs> so, to kind of get us up to speed, let's go back and see what led us to Batman and Robin. Back in 1989, a little known filmmaker at the time, Tim Burton, brought to us Batman, the first live action Batman feature since the 60s movie. It was dark and more intense than what kids and parents would expect. Personally, I loved this movie, and so did many others as it became a huge box office hit. Burton would be enlisted for a sequel, Batman Returns, which went darker, so much so that Warner Bros. decided they needed to go lighter for a sequel, which gave us Batman Forever, the first Schumacher feature. While a lot of the problems fans had with the following movie was present for Batman Forever, it never got nearly the same amount of hate, though I'd argue it's the lesser of the Schumacher films. Fun, sure, but not as much. Anyway, the movie hit, it made bank, and we got Batman and Robin, the film that killed superhero movies, until Blade came out less than two years after. But who cares about that part? The nerds surely didn't, because they'd like you to believe that Batman and Robin caused far more damage than it actually did. At its worst, Batman and Robin is just not a good movie. Th that's it. But because fan outcry was so loud that the following Batman movie stripped all the outlandish stuff, Curses. people would have you believe that Batman and Robin led to years without superhero movies because that was the punishment we earned for letting it happen. But again, Blade, X-Men, these appeared not too long after. But I suppose if Batman and Robin was some insult to film, I should at least talk about the movie itself. I want a car. Chicks dig the car. This is why Superman works alone. So, Batman and Robin is at its core a typical Batman story from his campier, more family-friendly side, which makes up a larger portion of the character's history than people would have you believe. You got Batman and his sidekick Robin, they fight crime with gadgets, new villains arise, but a new friend appears too. While Batman and Robin are arguing a bit, Batman thinks Robin needs to mature, while Robin feels like Batman doesn't trust him enough. We've seen this before with buddy movies, honestly. And then we get Mr. Freeze, who's the big bad in this film, trying to freeze Gotham while saving his wife. Poison Ivy is in the mix, testing the limits of Batman and Robin's friendship. Alfred gets sick, making this a rare story where an Alfred is more than just a butler that Batman talks to. And eventually Batgirl comes in to help save the day and Bane is there because why not? Rubber lips are immune to your charms. Now the movie can rightly be called overstuffed, maybe even lacking in focus. I'll admit there's a lot going on and not all of it is fully necessary, fair enough. How is that deserving of the constant hate the movie got? Sure, I see how that's bad, but worst movie ever? No. The movie is constantly put up in lists of worst movies of all times, and that its greatest crime is just having too much going on? It's silly. I mean, a lot of movies, good or bad, have too much in them. The Transformers movies from Michael Bay? All overstuffed. The first and only good Pirates of the Caribbean? Overstuffed. Hell, even the Avengers movies can be described as having a lot going on, and they're still fine. So I'm sorry, that's not enough to say this movie is one of the worst. What else could Batman and Robin have done to be considered one of the worst of all time? Well, I've been avoiding it, but let's face it. A lot of the hate it got, and in some parts of the online world still gets, come from how many dorks, and at this point really assholes, thought this movie was really gay. Bat nipples, which appeared in forever, but whatever. Batman and Robin's friendship, the overall look of Gotham emphasizing male figures, all very gay. And considering the director was openly gay, it was no surprise it was all there. Question though, what exactly is wrong with a gay Batman? This is more so where the hate for this movie bothers me. So many hated it for how gay it was, but 
so what? Gay isn't bad. And if we got a movie that flaunted itself as such, who cares? It's not hurting anyone. It's not like Batman never had camp or gay implications. But of course, a bunch of the insecure straight men had to hate it. Just because they felt uncomfortable seeing a silly Batman movie instead of one that reaffirmed their manhood or whatever. Of course, this isn't to say that hating Batman and Robin makes you straight, or that liking it makes you gay. I'm secure enough to enjoy it and be straight. I'm sure that the immature commenters will get that. It's a broad way of looking at it, sure, but to deny a lot of the hate being homophobia is to deny a lot of the weak criticism that comes from bat nipples. I mean, seriously, that's your big complaint of the movie? That the costume has nipples? I mean, yeah, it's silly, but come on, guys. At the end of the day, can we all just admit that the hate for this movie and Joel Schumacher is silly? It got out of hand for no reason other than people being immature about a movie they just didn't like. Batman and Robin didn't kill a genre, it didn't kill the Batman franchise, it didn't hurt anyone. It just made grown men mad that their kids film was aimed at kids instead of them and that it was designed by a gay man who brought out the camp and color of the franchise. Do you have to enjoy the movie? No. I do, but I also like Cars too, so what do I know? I just think it's time to admit that Batman and Robin doesn't deserve its place as one of the worst things ever. It never deserved the amount of hate it got, and nerds, we gotta stop calling movies the worst ever just because the movie doesn't follow some strict fan guideline. Almost every movie that fans have named the worst ever is undeserving of such a title. Well, except Batman v Superman, but that's a whole other video. And its badness isn't from a lack of being true to the source, whatever that means. Joe Schumacher... You made a movie I enjoyed. And you did so much other stuff, it's strange how you get dragged for this one movie. And now that you're gone, I feel sorry that geek culture never fully came around to say sorry for all the we threw at you. For one movie that was at worst, not good. So I'll say this. Thank you, Joel Schumacher. Your Batman had plenty of imagination and incredible settings. Thank you for your contributions that go beyond a silly comic book character. And thank you for being a part of film history. The world wouldn't be the same without you, so I hope you rest in peace. Looking after heroes? No, sir. My only regret is that I was never able to be out there with you. I'm Mr. White Christmas. I'm Mr. Snow.